I saw a plaque once that read, dancing is the art of getting your feet out of the way faster than your partner can step on them. Hello, my name is Cal Wadrowski, and I want to welcome you to this lesson, which is just one lesson in this new and improved series of dance lessons on how to do the rhythm two-step, which is also called the Arizona two-step. All of the lessons that are part of this new series of dance lessons have a common numbering format in the titles that help identify them and distinguish them from the older lessons and from the other videos that are on my channel. If you're new to my channel and if you're interested in learning how to do this dance, I recommend that you watch the lessons that are part of this new series and ignore the older lessons from the original series. I also recommend that you watch the lessons in numerical order. For your convenience, I've created a playlist for this new series, and all the lessons will be added when they become available. The title of the playlist is something like Brand New Series Rhythm Two-Step, and I will put a link to that playlist at the top of this video in case you're interested. Now in this lesson, I want to cover some very important things related to dancing with a partner. Shelly and I will be going over the basics of dance frame, what to do with your hands, different hand positions, and so forth. We'll also turn on some music for couples who want to practice the footwork together as a couple. So let's go ahead and bring Shelly out and we'll get started. In this lesson, Shelly and I want to cover some things specifically related to dancing with your partner. And one specific thing that we're going to be covering is dance frame. And by the way, the term dance frame has to do with the shape that we make with our shoulders, our arms, and our hands. The gentleman's dance frame in a closed position would be typically something like this. The ladies, go ahead and show them, Shelley. The ladies would be something like that. And when the two come together, they make a connection and it would look something like this. And by the way, this is considered closed position. A lot of dances, this would be a common position to start in. A lot of ballroom dances, several other country dances, so this is a common position. But there are other positions like the open position, which this would be considered open position, or this would be an open position. But this is a closed position. Something to keep in mind is that good dancers will tend to have good dance frame, and that's why we want to spend a little bit of time talking about this. So gentlemen, with your left hand, you're typically going to be holding your arm out. You're not going to extend it way out straight like that, or you're not going to have it way in here. You're just going to kind of have it comfortably out like this. And you're going to kind of have your hand somewhat open, maybe cupped a little bit, but you're definitely not grabbing the lady's hand or pinching or squeezing it. I think a lot of people get confused. We talk about gentlemen. Women love a, dancing with gentlemen that have a strong lead. But a strong lead does not mean a strong grip or pinching or squeezing. That is not what it means to be a strong lead. As a matter of fact, I hear a lot of complaints about, and Shelly experiences this a lot, where gentlemen are squeezing or gripping and the hand actually hurts a lot. And just uh, within the last six weeks or so, I had two different women. One actually said that she hurt her wrist, like sprained it or twisted it because the guy was grabbing her hand so tight. And then another uh, woman had actually mentioned that the night before, or earlier that night, somebody was grabbing her hand so hard that it hurt. Now, gentlemen, with your right arm, you're going to typically have it around the lady's left shoulder blade, kind of like this. Unless you know the lady personally, you're typically not going to have it around her waist or lower. You're typically going to have it around the shoulder blade. Um, ladies, you with your right hand are going to typically rest your hand on the gentleman's left hand just like this. So, and then ladies, your left arm is typically going to be resting over the gentleman's right arm and then on his shoulder. The way that Shelly's got it, sometimes people might have it like this or like this. Anywhere in there is fine. It doesn't really matter. What you don't want to do, ladies, with your left arm is be pushing down. It can be very tiring for the guy to be, it can be hard enough for all of us to be holding our hands out like this, but when the lady's pushing down, they can be very uh, kind of aggravating. So, Probably the only time that you should be pushing down on an arm is when a guy's squeezing your hand. <laughs> so. Now, good dance frame is important because it, when you have a good connection with your partner, it makes it a lot easier for the lady to follow the gentleman, and it makes it a lot easier for the couple to dance in unison, so to speak. So, a couple other things on dancing in closed position. One is, if you're social dancing, just like I mentioned that, um, as a rule, gentlemen, your right hand will be on her shoulder blade and not way lower. 
Uh, also, it's good to respect the lady's private space, which means you're not going to be coming way in if you don't know the woman personally. So respect the lady's private space when you're dancing. Some people will also say when you're talking about this closed position that you would want to be dancing as if you've got like a beach ball or a barrel or something in between you. Uh, so if that helps convey a little bit of what we're doing here, you can keep that in mind. Some people will also suggest that Gentlemen, in order for you to have good dance frame and have your hands like this, imagine or actually practice with oranges or grapefruit or something under your arms. The point is that this, is, this would not be good dance frame. Good dance frame would be more of this. So imagining a beach ball between the two of you and maybe imagining practicing or imagine dancing with um, you know, oranges or something or softballs or something underneath your arms might be uh, a good thing to convey there. With a lot of dances, when you're in closed position, you may want to be offset a little bit, meaning that the lady, instead of being directly in front of the gentleman, would be off slightly so that her, her right foot is kind of between the gentleman's two feet and the gentleman's is between the lady's two feet. With this dance, that's not so important, but just be aware that with some dances, waltz and a lot of other dances, it's good to have the lady offset a little bit. I think we tend to be slightly offset, probably just because I've danced for so long, but um, it's more comfortable here than it is yeah. over there, actually, just the way our arms are. A little while ago, I mentioned that, gentlemen, you're going to have your hand open, and I, and I want to reemphasize this again. As I said, good, strong lead for the gentleman. To be a good, strong lead does not mean a strong grip. So as a rule, you have your hand just cupped like this with the lady resting her hand in there. It's a lot more comfortable. She can dance all night like that. But if you start squeezing, pinching, or grabbing, it can be very irritating and it can hurt. There may be some occasions, I with some moves, where you'll have to hold her hand just a little bit rather than just having it cupped in order to get through the move. But as a rule, do not squeeze or grab the hand. When you're dancing in closed position like this, you do want to have, in order to maintain frame, you, you want to have some firmness. You don't want to just be, you, you know, you want to maintain that frame a little bit. Now, you don't want to be all stiff and rigid and uncomfortable, but you want to maintain this. And that may be where the idea of dancing with a beach ball or a barrel or something between you comes in. So that the point being that if the gentleman is trying to lead the lady this way, she's going that way, and it's not like one of these things. So you're maintaining frame so that if the guy wants to move in one direction or another, you're maintaining that, and then the lady will be able to follow really well. I want to touch on just a couple other hand positions that may come up down the road. The first couple moves that we're going to teach in one of the next lessons we're going we're gonna to actually do the move from this closed position. We're going to lead the lady in this, in this position and do the move in this position. But I just want to just really quickly mention that there are other hand positions. So this is a closed position. This would be like a two-hand hold, which there are some things that we'll do from a two-hand hold. Or you've got cross hand, right hands on top, or you could have cross hand, left hands on top. So nothing to worry about or really think about right now, but just be aware in case I failed to mention it later on, I'm trying to make sure we've got all this stuff covered now. So be aware that there are other hand positions. Okay, men, I want to touch on just a few things specifically for gentlemen who are just starting out learning this dance, and especially for gentlemen who may be brand new to dancing altogether. When you go out dancing, as a rule, you need to take the lead. You need to take charge. And this not only applies to which moves you're going to do and when to do the moves, but it also applies to starting the dance in the first place after the song has begun. When you're just a beginner, you may be a little bit timid when you go on the dance floor, which might result in the lady trying to nudge you along and take the lead. I encourage you to be firm and gently let her know that you're not quite ready. Let's go ahead and see if we can demonstrate that. So let's say that we're off the dance floor, the music starts, you ask the lady to dance, so the music's going, you go on the dance floor, and whoa, there she is. She's ready to go like that, okay? So what you want to do, when I say you want to jerk gently but firmly, by gently what I mean is you don't give her the evil eye, you don't make a big scene, you don't go, I'm not ready, or anything like that. Um, so you're gentle in that you're polite and diplomatic about it, but you're firm in the fact that 
you just kind of let her know that you, you're not quite ready. So let's see if we can try to demonstrate that. So she's going to do the same thing. This is kind of more how you would want to handle it. Hopefully this conveys. So music's going. She says, sure, she'll dance. So we go on the dance floor. Oh, she's ready. And I just kind of take her and just, you know, maybe smile or do something. And then I wait for the beat. Even if it takes a moment, it's a little bit awkward. I wait for the beat and then I get started. A few moments later, she's going to go, wow, I kind of like that. He's pretty good, right? Yeah. So gentlemen, you should start when you are ready, because in order for you to be a strong and clear leader, you also need to be a strong and clear starter. Most women will tend to appreciate that anyway. Typically they want to dance with someone who's a strong leader. Besides, if you start out sooner than you're ready, you may end up dancing offbeat or you might just feel off for the rest of the dance. Now over time, with just a little experience, you're going to get better and quicker at starting quickly. But don't rush it. Just start dancing when you're feeling the beat of the music and when you're ready to start. So what I want to do in the remaining few minutes of this lesson is take advantage of the things that we just covered regarding dance frame and the closed position and things like that and dancing with the partner and do a little bit of practicing for people who have a partner. If you haven't already done the basic footwork with a partner, we're just going to take a couple minutes and do that. We're going to do it first without music and then we're going to do it with music. When we do it, I'm going to do a little bit of counting and Shelly and I will probably also do a little rotating a little bit to our clockwise or to my right, a little bit to the left, we might move forward and back. And I'm not saying that because Shelly needs to know because the lady, if you've got a good dance frame, the lady is going to follow wherever you go. I'm just letting you know more, more for the gentleman that I'm going to do that in case I'm not talking you through that. When, if I'm rotating clockwise and you don't feel like rotating, don't worry about it. Or if you want to go counterclockwise and I'm going clockwise, there's no right and wrong. The main emphasis here is that you don't need to just be focused on facing in one direction the whole time. You want to feel comfortable being able to move around a little bit on the dance floor if there's people coming or there's people in your way, things like that. So, um, so let's go ahead again. You can just... Uh, refer back to the part of the uh, closed position. We're not going to repeat that here. I'm going to go ahead and count us in and we'll do a little bit of practicing here. Ready and one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three. Three, four, five, six. Very good. You do that really well. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing we just did, but I'm going to go turn on a little bit of music. I'm going to put on a fairly slow song. I might do a little counting. If the music's a little loud, you might have a hard time hearing me, but if you've done practicing from the lessons that we taught in lessons four and five A and B, um, this should all be pretty easy. All we're doing again is taking advantage of dancing with proper dance frame and practicing a little bit of the footwork with a partner before we move on to teaching some moves. So let me just run over here.
Okay, well, I hope that uh, that went well for you. We sure appreciate your watching, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much, Shelly, for your help.